Bobby, you want to start us off? Porter, going back to Wednesday, you made the switch, starting lineup with Waldo, Otega. What was the logic behind it? Did, did you like what came of it? Yeah, the logic was, I mean, we uh, – at Oklahoma State, we started Waldo in the second half, and I just thought Tega had a great half and just thought maybe just sitting there um, getting a feel for the start of the, the game, um, you know, it, 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 it worked in the, at Oklahoma State. I thought he had his best half in a long time. And uh, just just changing it up. See, you know, we've got uh, try, really need Tega to get going. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're, we're looking at that. That was what, probably the logic behind it. And uh, so obviously, you know, we're going we're gonna to stay with that again. And then obviously you're a history tradition guy. Like, you know how important this weekend is and what Coach Sampson has meant to OU. What is your relationship like with him, and how has it grown since you've taken over in Norman? Yeah, I've known Kelvin a long time since I was an assistant at Texas A&M working for Tony Brony, and um, he just always, you know, one thing I like love about Coach is that he, uh, you know, even as an assistant, young assistant, he, he, he just know your name. He would treat you the same and um, just respected him so much, you know, coming up watching his teams play. And then I got to know him more, and, uh, you know, he's just a, a great guy, you know, off the floor, everything. But he's just – he's a brilliant coach. His team's how he gets them to play so hard, consistently, fundamental. I mean, everyone talks about how good the defense they are. Obviously, they're number one in defense, but they're also fifth and fewest turnovers in the country out of 360 teams. Um, but – um I remember talking to him um, in the bubble, in the NCAA bubble. And I was, you know, every all the teams were there in the team rooms. And they, you know, there was the whole NCAA field were just team room after team room. It was very unique. And when we got to the Sweet 16, our team room, we moved and we were right next to Houston. And so we had a week off. So every day I saw a coach going back and forth, eating meals. And my name was rumored for a lot of jobs. And, um, and Oklahoma at the, actually at the time wasn't open. And, um, and we were just talking about different things about being happy. And then I remember talking to him when Oklahoma opened and he's like, that is the best place. That is the best place, the best people. And he just had the most highest things to say about it. But watching what he's done at Houston, it's, it's unbelievable. The job he's done there at, at Houston, building that program to an elite, elite program. Appreciate it, Porter. Josh? Yeah, Porter, I mean, obviously it's not every day you get to play number one, you know, in your building. Just what's your expectation, I guess, for the environment with Kelvin's return added into it? Just, I guess, your excitement for what OU fans can do for you and help you out with this this game and this spot. Well, first and foremost, we're trying to win. I mean, like, we, uh, I know we've had very good environments here playing high-level teams, the Kansases. I mean, last year we had number two Alabama come in here. But like we've we've had high great teams in here, so um, so obviously we're we're a business like approach trying to do what we need to do to to combat their defense, to stop their offense, all those things. Um, but on a on a personal note for Coach Sampson and uh, Kellen, his son and his family, um, you know Quanis and Hollis, who meant a lot here. I mean those guys those guys paved the way. I mean, those guys are a big part of Oklahoma history. Um, what they did here, we sell the past as, as part of building the future. And um, they, you know, that's why we brought them back. Uh, this offseason, we brought back that final four team, the 20-year anniversary, and honored all those guys. Um, and that was a big part of it. So um, I know he's beloved here. Those players are. Um, so that's a, a nice dynamic of it. But make no mistake, we're trying to win the game. I mean, we're, we're, this is, a, and so are they. And uh, we're, we're, it's a business-like approach trying to do what we have to do to combat that defense and stop that offense. Chris? Yeah, Coach, what are some things that you look at against you? I mean, you just mentioned the defense and offense, but what are some specifics you guys will need to do to be able to control this game and get the upset? First, they're they're elite in offensive rebounding. Um, 
just uh, I think they're number nine in the country on offense rebounding. So they they just absolutely relentless. If they're not grabbing it, they're getting a hand on it. So the the rebounding war is always a factor when you play Houston or Coach Samson's team. That's that's second of all is, is ball toughness, taking care of the ball. Um, they're number three in the country of forcing turnovers. So they're number one in the country in defense. They're number three in forcing turnovers. They're number one in steals. They're number one in field goal percentage defense. So you have to have some ball toughness. Um, we got to step in and take good shots. We got to get shots. You know, and um, I want to, we, we I talked to a couple of the guys individually. We passed up some shots at, at Iowa State. And we're coming off Iowa State's number two in defense. So when you play a team like that so close, hopefully it's, it's, you know, you're, you're, you're getting used to seeing elite defenses. So we've got to be ready for how hard they hedge on their ball screens, how hard they scramble, how physical they are on the drives. So those are the ball toughness and then rebounding. Those are just two things that we're, you, you got to be ready for. But I'll say this, it's very hard to simulate in practice. So that's why we, that hopefully that game against Iowa state does that loss doesn't go in vain because that's playing that team so close. It's very similar to, to, to Houston, how hard they hedge, how hard they trap, how hard they scramble. And coach, with, L, with uh, LJ Cryer, you guys faced him when he was at Baylor. How has he grown and developed and, and what does he bring to the table? He's a great example of how elite his footwork is and his shot preparation is. Like he, the way he prepares to come off a screen, he sets you up. Um, he's just not getting shots that are just wide open. Like he can get, he can create space and that's what great shooters do. But he looks, he looks like he's matured so much on his tempo and changing speeds. They run that Philly action. He'll stop and then change speeds and come tight off the screen and his footwork, catch, turn, footwork elite. You can see they've really worked on in that. He just got a great tempo for his shot. Um, but he's got elite um, change of speed, setting up shot preparation before the catch to get himself catch and shoot. And he doesn't need a lot of time. Doesn't need a lot of time. We'll go Tom and then back to Bob. Porter, you mentioned their offensive rebounding, um, obviously the other night against Iowa State. That's an area you guys kind of struggled in. Just how do you emphasize that heading into this game? And it, at some point, does it just kind of boil down to effort? in that regard or yeah it, it's 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 well it's it's you've got to go out to in you we can't we say we can't migrate to the paint and play volleyball with them you know you, you we've got to out to in check off um i told them i'm not going to ask the officials for any over the back calls that's what i said but that's not going to be reality what's going to happen but um they, you know just you we got to be physical on on boxing out but um you know i think you know john obviously Losing John, we, we lost a big part of our physicality, you know, whether it was a post-up game, getting some deep post-ups with a physicality, but also defensively rebounding physicality of not getting pushed around in there. Um, so we, I thought we, I thought we got pushed around a little bit at Iowa State, and we, 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 we talked about that. We've watched it on film. We, we've got to be physically tough with our backouts, low leveraged and out to end. You just can't migrate to the paint on a team as elite as Houston rebounding. Obviously, the, the shots weren't falling Wednesday, but how encouraged were you with the defensive effort throughout most of the game? Yeah, Bob, I was, I was, I was real pleased defensively. Um, we did a lot of good things defensively. Um, they got some baskets like they always do off turnovers. Um, they got a lot of baskets off on rebounds, but in terms of guarding them in the half court, we did a lot of really good things. I think it's, I think Houston held them to fifty-seven. We held them to fifty-eight. I think those are like two lowest totals in two years there at Hilton Coliseum. So we did enough defensively, but our struggles offensively struggles, making shots three of 17. You can't, you, you, on a team that scrambles so much, you're going to have to step in and make some threes. Um, and like we did here, we made 10 when we beat them here. So, um, but defensively, I, I thought we really, really good. Um, and we got to, we got to do the same thing against Houston. I mean, they're, they're, we've really got to, We've got a guard and, and 
not let them go off offensively because they're going to make it real hard on you defensively. Any additional questions for coach? Go back to Tom. Yeah, Porter, you mentioned, you know, obviously how good they are defensively and, you know, not wanting that last game against Iowa State to go in vain. Does it help? In I mean, I know it's challenging having these two top 10 teams back to back, but does it help in a sense having these two teams that have similar defensive profiles just one into the other? It, it, it has to, you know, because you can't simulate in practice. So we saw it Wednesday um, and we saw where we struggled and you can learn from it. We got to grow. You know, you got to grow through it. Um, through struggle, you have to grow. So we just had a struggle and we've got to grow from it uh, Saturday. Uh, that's the only option we can look at is we got to be better, you know, against that physicality. And um, we talked to Javion, we talked to Los, um, we talked to Latre, you know, the, the, the guards, Waldo and Otega, all the guards about it. We talked to our bigs, Luke, about being more physical in there. We really talked to Luke about that. So, um, it's been a, a point of contention, but it's hard to simulate. And we just had that simulation Wednesday. So that's the only thing it could do is help you grow from it. All right. If there's no further questions, um, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Coach. All right, guys.